So this is the infamous 2870 full frame lens for Sony cameras. It has an aperture of f3.5, comes equipped with optical steady shot to get more stabilized footage, and has a focal length of 28 to 70 millimeters. This little guy also happens to be the kit lens that comes on Sony full frame cameras. So why do I say it's infamous? Well, throughout the years, this guy has gotten a lot of hate. When you go ahead and buy your full frame camera and opt in and getting the kit lens, which I did, I didn't really know that this lens was so cheap. You can actually get them on eBay for $125, which is, it's nothing compared to the other lenses like this Sigma 2470 f2.8. And honestly, since I've gotten this camera, I haven't touched this lens. I haven't used it once. There's really no need. If you're opting in and buying an expensive camera, why would you use a cheap lens with the expensive camera? In retrospect, I wish I just got the body, but I have this lens now and I've never touched it. So I figured I'd do a quick review on it and compare this with my closest lens in comparison, which is the Sigma 2470, as well as shoot in the same aperture range that this offers, which is f3.5, and just see how the photography compares. Is this just complete junk and you should never use it? Like so many people on the internet say, or is it kind of just like underrated? Yeah, it's never gonna compare to higher quality lenses, but maybe it has its place in certain scenarios. For one, this thing's very light, much, much lighter than this lens. So I would count that as a pro in some scenarios. On the other hand, the build quality, it honestly just feels very cheap. The zoom ring is glidey, it's smooth, but the focus ring is, it's way too light for my likings at least. It's made of this plastic material and in my hands it just does not feel like a quality product. But the build quality and feeling of a lens shouldn't be by any means a reason to get a lens or not get a lens. So I have a few objects with me here. I have a journal, a pine cone, a watch, and a ball. And we're just gonna take some test shots with both lenses and see what we can come up with. And I think it'll be interesting to see if we can spot major differences. Honestly, the way I feel these days is most people view their photos and videos on a phone. So if you're watching this video and you're looking at these photos through my video on your phone, let me know if you see a difference. I'm gonna blow them up on the big screen and kind of pixel peep a little to see if I see any big flaws. I would say the average user is gonna be like, honestly, Joe, I, I can't really tell that you shot it with this lens or that lens. That's keeping in mind, obviously, that you're looking at your phone. I'm pretty sure if you blew it up on a big screen, like a computer monitor or sent it to print, you're probably gonna notice some differences. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set this watch up and just take some test shots of it. As another quick tidbit here, before I get into the photography, it is in minimum aperture range of f3.5 to f5.6, meaning in order to get 3.5, you have to be at 28 millimeters. And as you zoom out further here, you're gonna only get certain aperture ranges, like at max zoom, you're gonna get aperture f5.6. So that means with this lens, I will also shoot at 28 millimeters instead of 24 millimeters. Also, I'm gonna put this on a tiny tripod here just to eliminate any camera shake because I don't want it to be unfair. And it looks like in order to get the correct exposure for this shot, it's ISO 400 and an exposure of 1 15th of a second. We're gonna go to put this on a time shot mode just to eliminate all camera shakes and try my best to be still. All right, and here goes shot number one. Shot number two. Get a bit more of a colorful object in here now. And lastly, the journal. See if it can pick up on all the intricate details of this. All right, got that done. I'm gonna go ahead and switch out the lenses now. All right, the watch with the Sigma lens now. Do the pine cone. The ball. And lastly, the journal. All right, so let's go ahead and blow those up on the computer and take a look at them. All right, so bringing these photos into post, we're gonna go ahead and look at the watch and then the pine cone and then the journal and then the ball side by side so we can kind of inspect them and see what we're looking at. So for this first photo, we're using the watch using the 2870 Sony kit lens. And at first glance, it looks like a pretty decent image. As a quick side note, I did zero editing to these whatsoever. I just wanted to get it right out of the camera. So zooming in on the watch quite a little bit, really just trying to see how the details are. As you can see, 
the numbers look pretty clean. And the more we zoom in here, it actually gets quite a bit of detail. Now let's switch over to the Sigma capture. And I didn't capture the watch too well here, unfortunately. One thing I do notice is these lines here, they look a little better than the lines in the last one. If you zoom in here about the same, you can see like a little bit of distortion. If you come back to this one and zoom in, lines look really clean. Switching over to the image of the pine cone here, this is the 2870 kit lens again. Zooming in, overall this looks like a pretty clean image. I'm switching to the Sigma version. First impression, and I don't know if this is me being biased because I want the Sigma to be better, but overall zooming in on the pine cone, it just looks a lot cleaner overall. So I'm just gonna switch back and forth a few times so you guys can kind of get a idea here. So, so this is the 2870 kit lens, back to the Sigma, back to the 2870 kit lens, and back to the Sigma. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this ball. Again, this is the 2870 kit lens. Zoom in a little bit. And going to the Sigma, we'll zoom in a little bit. So just zooming in a little bit and trying to inspect kind of like the leather details in this with like the little leather lines in there. The 2870 kit lens does seem to lose a little bit of quality off first glance. That looks a lot more crisp and clean. That being said, zoomed out fully, I don't see too much of a difference. Actually, I lied. This this image overall looks quite a bit better. So this being the Sigma lens just looks quite a bit better than the uh, 2870. But overall, again, on a smartphone, you're really not going to be able to tell too much of a difference. And switching over to the journal picture here, this is the 2870 kit lens again. Overall, the quality looks pretty good. Switch to the Sigma lens and the colors just look better. I didn't change any of the settings, so it's interesting that the colors look that much better and more true. So let's just switch back and forth a few times. This is the 2870 kit lens, the Sigma lens, back to the 2870 kit lens, and back to the kit lens. Overall, my basic impressions on this is just by sight, it looks like the Sigma lens did outperform the 2870, and that's kind of what I expected, and I'm pretty sure that's what all y'all expected. But the main question is, are you seeing $1,000 worth of difference? I would feel more comfortable delivering a picture using the Sigma lens because it does look quite a bit better, especially with this journal here. But if you're more of an amateur, not really delivering photos for a client, I don't really see an issue with using the 2870. It's a cheap lens, light lens, and you're still gonna get pretty good images out of your camera. All right, so that's it for this video. That is a general demo and review in comparison to other more expensive lenses. Overall, if I'm using an expensive camera, I don't really see a use of using a cheaper lens, especially when I have it. Though the optical steady shot might come in handy when it comes to taking videos, especially when backpacking, hiking, or, or doing nature stuff where I don't really wanna carry a gimbal. But that'll be a video for another time. I'll take some video tests with this lens using a small rig cage, putting all the stabilization together with the OSS and the IBIS on the Sony, and seeing how smooth we can get handheld footage with the combination. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. Please consider hitting that subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell to keep up to date on all my latest content. And I'll catch you all in the next video.